In this video, I want to find the values of k such that these quadratic equations all have distinct real roots. Okay. Now, in order for that to be the case, the discriminant must be greater than zero. So you want to make that very clear when you're answering this question. So uh, distinct real roots implies that the discriminant of the quadratic would have to be positive. And so we're going to need to identify A, B, and C in each of these cases. Okay. Now, you'd probably want to make this very explicit to the examiner. So writing down A equals B equals C equals first uh, will not only help you make sure that you get this bit right, but also shows off to the examiner your method. So for question number one, we have 6x squared plus 3x plus k equals 0. So a is the value in front of the x squared, so 6, the coefficient of the x squared. Uh, 3 is the coefficient of x, and k is what you have left over. So substituting into the inequality, we have 3 squared. Take away 4 lots of 6 times k is greater than 0. So we have 9, take away 24k must be greater than 0. So if I add the 24k to uh, the other side, we'll have 9 is greater than 24k, so 24k would be less than 9. Okay, so I've moved it over there and then just reordered the inequality. The alternative to that is that you subtract 9 from both sides and then divide through by minus 1, which will flip the inequality symbol as well. So same difference. So then k must be less than 9 over 24, which you can divide top and bottom by 3, uh, so that's 3 eighths. So k would have to be less than 3 eighths um, in order for this to have two distinct real roots. Okay, so that is the answer to the first question. Let's have a look at number 2. So number two, uh, A is the coefficient of x squared, so 3. B is the coefficient of x, so 1. And C is whatever's left over, the k plus 2. Okay, so it's all of that bit there. So we have, substituting in, B squared, take away 4 lots of A times C. So we have 1, take away 4 lots of 3 is 12, so 12k. And then we've got 12 lots of 2, and so that's 24. So take away 24 is greater than 0. OK, let's move the 12k over to the other side. So we've got 1 take away 24, so minus 23 is greater than 12k. Or reordering that, you could write it around that way. And so k is less than minus 23 twelfths, OK? And so that's our answer to number no, number two. Number number two. Number two. OK. Let's have a look at number three. 2x squared plus kx plus 5 equals 0. So a is the coefficient of the x squared, so 2. b is the coefficient of x, so k. And c is whatever's left over. So this time we have k squared, take away 4 lots of a times c. That is greater than 0, sorry. So k squared, uh, we have 4 times 2 is 8, times 5 is 40. So we need to solve this inequality here. So here is your k-axis. Here is the quadratic, k squared minus 40. This would be the negative square root of 40, and that would be the positive square root of 40. OK, now, if you square root 40, you can simplify it down to 2 root 10. So um, if you're looking at this as minus 2 root 10, and that's 2 root 10, where is the parabola above the k-axis? Well, it's above it there and there. So that region and that region. So k would have to be less than minus 2 root 10. Or 
k is greater than positive 2 root 10. OK, so two distinct regions, so two, um, two inequalities. OK, right, that was number three. So number four, the coefficient of x squared is 1. The coefficient of x is k plus 1. And whatever's left over is 4. So we have k plus 1 squared, substituting in. Take away 4 lots of 1 times 4, uh, which is greater than 0. Expanding this double bracket, k squared plus 2k plus 1. And we're taking away 16 is greater than 0. So k squared plus 2k minus 15 is greater than 0. So that can be factorised. That is k plus 5, k minus 3. So let's draw our diagram. Here's my parabola going on the k-axis. Uh, this is a parabola that goes through minus 5 and 3. Where is the parabola above the k-axis? It's above it there and there. So k would have to be less than negative 5, or k would have to be greater than 3. OK, so two regions, two inequalities, just as it was in the previous example. OK, so we arrive at the last one. Number 5. Now, the coefficient of x squared here is k. The coefficient of x is k plus 1. And whatever's left over is k plus 1. Right, so I need to substitute into my formula. I've got k plus 1 squared. Take away 4 lots of k times k plus 1 is greater than 0. So I've substituted into the inequality rather than the formula. Rather, so into the inequality. k plus 1 squared is k squared plus 2k plus 1. We've got minus 4k times k, so take away 4k squared. And we've got minus 4k times 1, so minus 4k is greater than 0. So if k squared take away 4k squared is minus 3k squared, 2k take away 4k is minus 2k, and we've got the 1 left over. So I'm going to multiply through by minus 1. And that will flip the inequality symbol. Right, let's see what my calculator makes of that. So I'm going to uh, put it into my polynomial solver. And I get 1 third and minus 1. So 3k, um, what do we have? A third, so minus 1. And k plus 1 is less than 0. Yeah, that works out, doesn't it? That's factorised. OK, there's my parabola. It's going through a third and minus 1. Where is the parabola below the k-axis? It's there. OK. Now, that's between the minus 1 and a third. Now, we need to be very careful with this one. We need to be careful with this because there is a certain value of k between those two values that is a problem uh, to do with our original question. And that is number 5. Uh, sorry, and that is k equals 0. We're dealing with number 5. And that is k equals 0. So what happens when k equals 0? Well, when k is 0, we would have... 0, x squared, we would have 1 lot of x, and we've got plus 1 is equal to 0. This is not a quadratic equation, OK? Um, it doesn't have more than one real root, OK? And so there is a problem with k equals 0. Um, because you're not getting a quadratic anymore. So how can we identify that? 
Well, because we're not including zero, that means effectively we have this break. And we can't include it, and so you've got to work up to it from both directions. So rather than writing that, OK, we can't write that, we've got to say that k is greater than minus 1 but less than 0, or k is greater than 0 but less than a third. OK? And so it's actually these two regions that we need to consider rather than including k is 0, because then we don't actually have a quadratic equation.